The Tigers are now past the midway point of the season heading into the All Star break and to get a mid season report on where this team stands. Evan Petzold of the Detroit Free Press kind enough to join us tonight. So Evan, let's go through this start of the season. Good May and June awful for this team and then we see the last week or so for the Tigers. What is your general pulse on where this team stands right now as they reach the past halfway point of the year? It's been such a fascinating season when you look at the way that things have gone, you know, from the great start they had, 5-0 and out of, the, out of the shoot, right, and then kind of fell apart. And then now suddenly guys are turning it back on again, and you're seeing the emergence of a young player like Colt Keith really putting the team on his back along with Riley Green. And look, I mean, the whole thing centers around the offense, right? The pitching staff has always been there. You look at what Tarek Skubal has been able to give the Tigers, what Jack Flaherty has done. Like, th this is a team that has proven they can pitch. Reese Olsen, another great example of a guy, you know, being able to come out there, step on the mound and shove. The big question has been, what are they going to get from the offense? And they weren't getting a whole lot from the offense nope. until these last 10 games or so, and that's why they've won eight of the last 10 games going to the All-Star break. Mentioning getting a veteran bat. I mean, the trade deadline is going to be here in a few days. What do you think the odds are with the Tigers being right there in the wild card picture at least, getting a veteran to maybe come in and help bolster that offense moving forward? Yeah, I mean, if that was going to happen, it would have happened in the offseason, and it kind of did when they went out and got Mark Canna. Let's not forget, Mark Canna has really struggled since May 1st. He's been a, a tough go of things at the plate. That's been a big issue for them. I mean, imagine if Mark Canna was giving you, you know, his career average production, this offense would be even better than where it's been the last 10 games so so imagine that um, yeah I don't see them going out and getting a bat I think this is a situation where they're in sell mode they've, they've always they're always going to be in sell mode like Jack Flaherty is going to be on the move at the trade deadline they're going to look to part ways with him and bring back some offensive pieces that maybe can help their organization maybe not this year but maybe next year mm -hmm. you know guys that maybe might be inserted into the double A or the triple A levels this year and then can make their debuts next year looking at the way things stand right now 65 games to go this team turned it on at the end of the first half, if you will, of the season. Where would your expectations lie with this team? 65 games to go, still within the wild card picture. Could they potentially get there? And we're talking about postseason baseball here in Detroit. Anything can happen. Never say never, right? right? Like that's kind of what they say. But for this team, I think really the way to be looking forward is like, okay, what are you going to get from Colt Keith? What are you getting from Wentzio Perez? How about Justin Henry Malloy? Kerry Carpenter, he comes back. Parker Meadows. I mean, Parker Meadows came back in that Cincinnati series, hit the home run right off the bat, and then had a great series, had the hamstring injury. When he comes back from that, how does he perform, right? I I'm looking to see how the young bats perform because that's going to tell me a lot about what next year's team might look like. And, and even years into the future. If they can count on Parker Meadows to play center field, that's a big deal. If they can mm -hmm. count on Colt Keith to be an impact bat right in the middle of the order, which he's proving to be really since May 1st, that's a big deal. Wencio Perez, like if you can move him around the diamond a little bit and you can play him at different spots, whether it's in left field and right field, maybe even a taste of center field. And if he's going to hit 270 for you, like that's a really yeah. big deal. Justin Henry Malloy, same thing. Like how does he develop in the outfield? Because, you know, he's got the pop in the bat. He's got to cut down on some of the end zone swing and miss. But, you know, when he hits the ball, he drives it a long way and he's showing a good knack for the strike zone too. So I think it's looking at how some of these young guys perform when Kerry Carpenter comes back. What do they get from him? And also, like, don't forget about Spencer Torkelson. Evan Petzold of the Detroit Free Press. Thank you for joining us tonight. Yeah, thank you very much. Still much more to come on SFE. We'll chat with the aforementioned Tarek Skubal. He's heading to his first All-Star game with a lot of confidence and a lot of great stats heading into it. Much more with him after the break.